Well, here's a device known as Maxwell's Wheel, and you might have already seen Maxwell's Wheel back when you were studying the law of conservation of energy. It's a device that starts out um, with some gravitational potential energy just by virtue of being um, up at some height, and then when you release it, it descends, but it doesn't just translate as it moves from point A to point B. It also rotates on its own axis, so the gravitational potential energy is converted into both translational kinetic energy and rotational kinetic energy. So this video lesson is just an investigation into that concept and some formulas that we can derive to help determine what's the acceleration of Maxwell's wheel as it falls. So let's take a look at that. Number one, as the wheel falls, it's definitely not in free fall. If we take a closer look at the wheel, we say the wheel is a, a solid cylinder. And it's a solid cylinder that's rotating about an axis that passes through its center. And then there's a string here and a string here that support it. So there's a force of gravity pulling down, but there's also tension in the string pulling up, some net amount of tension. And so free fall is the result when gravity is the one and only force that's acting, but we don't have a free body diagram with only gravity. We've got a net force that's equal to mg minus tension. So we would expect that Maxwell's wheel has an acceleration that's something less than g something less than 9.8 meters per second squared. So I want to introduce, first of all, a device that would be similar to the way that Maxwell's wheel operates, but with a slightly different configuration. So let me draw another picture to tell you more what I'm talking about. What if we had the same sort of solid disc, but instead of a small axle that the string winds around, we find a way to attach some sort of a strap to the perimeter of the wheel and then that strap wraps around the outer perimeter a few times and then we take this thing and drop it and let it fall. <clears throat> it's the same idea. It's going to translate but it's also going to rotate as it translates. So the gravitational potential energy in the end should be converted into a combination of translational kinetic energy plus rotational kinetic energy. Or in other words, Draw this again here. There's point A, and then it falls and reaches some point B. In doing so, it's displaced through a display we'll call H. Um, so the gravitational potential energy is MGH. The translational kinetic energy is 1 half MV squared, and rotational kinetic energy is one half i omega squared. So I'm not sure we've derived this one yet, but we'll get to it. But hopefully you've seen uh, in the previous video lessons that rotational inertia is calculated in different ways for different shaped objects. For a solid disk rotated about an axis like this passing through its center, rotational inertia can be calculated as one half times the mass of the object times the radius of the object squared. So that's the substitution that we'll make. <clears throat> step one, step two, step three, mgh equals one half mv squared plus one half of one half mr squared. And then we substitute in place of omega v over r, and omega gets squared. This r gets squared, so it cancels that r squared. So now we've got, in step four, there's an m that appears in every term, cancel, 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 and we have gh equals one-half v squared plus one-fourth, one-fourth v squared. Or in other words, we have 
3 fourths v squared. Okay, and it probably has a uniform acceleration as it descends, and its initial velocity is equal to zero. So we can say v squared equals v initial squared plus 2ah. The initial is zero. Oh, so v squared is 2ah. So gh equals 3 fourths of 2ah. H cancels out, and we have what now? 3 fourths times 2, 6 fourths, or in other words, 3 halves. G is equal to 3 halves of A, which is another way of saying A is equal to 2 thirds of G. So it matches our prediction. We predicted the acceleration would be something less than G, and it is. It's about 67% of G. Okay, but that's not really the design of Maxwell's wheel. Maxwell's wheel has a solid disk with a radius we'll call R2, and then there's some ideally lightweight axle that has a smaller radius that we might call R1, and the string is wound around that radius. So we'll start with the same formula, but the outcome is going to be slightly different. Step one is still a statement of the law of conservation of energy, that gravitational potential energy is being converted not just into translation, but also another form of mechanical energy associated with the rotation of the object. <clears throat> MGH equals one half mv squared plus one half times one half m. Now, I'm going to say one half m r squared, which r? Well, the rotational inertia is all, 99% of the rotational inertia is in the solid disk. The reason I say 99% is because it's only a small fraction of the total mass of the system. Maybe the wheel is made out of steel and then the, um, the handle is made out of some lightweight plastic or something along these lines, right? So the inertia is really all in the wheel and not so much in the handles. So this would be one half m times r number 2 squared. And then, I know I'm going to substitute, right, I'm really trying to say 1 half i omega squared. 1 half i, and then I should put in omega, but omega is v over r, but in this case, it's not v over r2, it's v over r1, because that's the radius that the string is unwinding on. So, let's simplify. Mass cancels out. We have GH equals 1 half, and then in place of V squared, once again, I'm going to say 2AH, and then plus, okay, 1 half times 1 half, 1 fourth, and then we've got an R2 and an R1. This R1 is going to get squared, so we can put R2 over R1 quantity squared. Okay, one half, one half gives us the one fourth. We've taken care of the r's and then we're left with a v squared, which we say is 2ah. So now there's an h everywhere that cancels out. <clears throat> if I multiply both sides of the equation by 2, I get 2g is equal to 2a plus Let's see, 1 fourth times 2 would give me 1 half, but I'm multiplying every term by 2, so I'm just left with R2 over R1 quantity squared times A. So we can factor out the A and rearrange, and it looks like A would be equal to G times 2 over 2 plus R2 over R1 quantity squared. So let's box that up and call that the acceleration of Maxwell's wheel. And let's just double check and see if it agrees with the simplified version of Maxwell's wheel. In other words, this is a case where R2, the radius of the wheel, is 
the radius around which the string is wrapped, so there's no distinction between R2 and R1, they're equal. When R2 equals R1, this quantity is just equal to 1. 1 squared would be equal to 1, so we would have A equals G times 2 over 2 plus 1. In other words, A would be equal to 2 thirds of G, which matches up. Pretty neat.